And Ritsu's ME7873 has a long history in RF conformance test as the number one test system for major network operators, chipset and device vendors, and test houses. One key factor in choosing Anritsu is that it is the most stable RFCT test system on the market, capable of running different radio access network technologies on the same platform. Anritsu also operates a world-class technical support service with dedicated in-region support engineers. Part of the reason for ME7873 and R stability is due to the software implementation. The system is configured for a 3GPP conformance test out of the box. The device on the test is automatically controlled by the test system through a highly flexible interface. Additional equipment for environmental testing such as power supplies and temperature chambers are automatically controlled by the test system. Test reports enable you to debug down to the physical layer and are stored in a database for efficient retrieval. Stability is maintained with an automatic calibration routine called runtime correction, which seamlessly operates in the background to ensure the measurement accuracy is maintained at all times. For user confidence, there are guided self-test routines to confirm the system is operating normally. As well as 3GPP testing, it's also possible to simply and quickly test just single conditions or extended testing for debug and regression purposes. There are other features to test efficiently, the UE database will allow a mix and match of different devices easily into different test campaigns. Another possibility is to store away the UE capability to use it to determine the supported test cases. And Ritsu's ME7873NR RF conformance test system supports both FR1 and FR2 in two different configurations. Both configurations exist under the test platform number TP250 in the GCF and PTCRB. This is the FR1 test system, so let's look at that in more detail. The system is housed in two racks, approximately 2 metres high, 1.15 metres wide and 0.8 metres deep. There's optionally a third rack for added component carrier support. Let's look at some of the instruments in detail. So. There are two signal generators, one at the top of each rack. These are interferal signal generators for those tests that need it. There's a CW signal generator here for blocking tests and also used for system calibration and correction. Below that are some filters, in-band and out-of-band filters for 4G and 5G. We may want to measure uh, signals out-of-band, but we don't want the in-band signal affecting it and vice versa. Then lower down in this rack we have the MT8000, this is the 5G signalling tester, so the, the main connection to the UE is through this device. Below that are some more filters, so there's filters here and here, these are for uh, 4G uplink signals, so LTE uplink signals, and also uh, a 5G amplifier, uplink amplifier for increasing the dynamic range. Back up here we have a signal analyzer, so this is used for most of the uplink measurements, so we can perform um, time domain and frequency domain measurements on here. Then we have the interface unit, so we can see four pairs of, of connectors on here. These are four antenna pairs, so TRX and RX in four positions. We can see this later in the GUI how these are configured. And then below that we have a combiner, two combiners. These allow you to combine all of the different radio access networks together to, to connect to the UE. And then finally at the bottom we have the LTE anchor. This is the MD8430. We've seen the FR1 system, so now let's look at the FR2 system in detail. This is still TP250 in the GCF and PTCRB. It's just a different configuration of it. So as we look at the test system here, there's some obvious differences. We have a, a large chamber. That's because FR2 testing is all done at OTA. It's all done over the air. So we, we're no longer conducted, so we need to replicate that over the air environment. So we use a chamber to do that. The test system itself is about three meters wide, two meters high, and about 1.2 meters deep. There's a rack on the left-hand side. This is a standalone rack, similar to the FR1 system. And then we have the chamber on some sort of stand at the bottom here. 
the chamber, as you can see, is, has, is split into three. So the system is delivered with the chamber split into three. And then Ritzy's staff will come on site and reassemble and perform any uh, calibration and performance checks. Let's look at some of the equipment in detail. So on the left hand rack, we have the 8430, the non TRX LTE anchor. We have the MT8000, this is the 5G signaling tester, which is so similar uh, model to the FR1 system, except we can now operate with FR2. And that's because we have some converters. They're hidden in the system. I can't show you those in this view. So those up and down converters work across all millimeter wave frequencies supported at the moment and provide the capability for uh, FR2 uh, testing. We have an LT anchor for TRX test cases shown here, the 8821Cs. And then we have some equipment here for the position controller. So the device under test needs to be checked over its whole sphere of operation. So in all uh, X, Y, and Z axes. So this position controller allows us to control a positioner inside the chamber. We'll look at that in more detail in a few seconds. And then in the rack on the right hand side, there's a signal analyzer similar to the FR1, but higher frequency range, similar model. And then we have a CW signal generator as well. In terms of the chamber itself, it's a CATR, a compact antenna test range chamber. So that means we operate in a far field type measurement situation, but using a reflector to create that uh, uh, measurement path length, but in a smaller volume and smaller length, physical length. So we'll look inside, there's a reflector inside here. We'll look at it in a few seconds in more detail. We can see some vents on here and there are also some on the rear. These allow for hot and cold air to be pumped in for extreme temperature conditions. So Enritsu supports those and is developing equipment to uh, to be ratified by uh, 3GPP RAN5. There is also some connectors here uh, and here. So these allow us to feed in control signals, power supply, etc. And also some removable plugs that we can feed cables in. So there's a door here to access the inside the chamber so there's a, a camera available as well so we can see what's going on inside of the chamber when it operates so let's look inside the chamber now so we're now looking inside the door from the right hand side towards the left hand edge of the the chamber so this is the door here and this is the door aperture we can see the reflector at the back we can see the in-band or, or measurement antenna below it's hidden below this absorptive material and then we can see the positioner on the right hand side with the device attached to it. So this operates to position the device in, in, in um, all planes of measurement. We also have some NR link antennas because the, this antenna here may also be used for measurement but not necessarily to maintain the link and similarly for LTE. So that's, that's the system in, in detail.